We're going to start by cutting a square from a rectangular piece of paper. Grab the piece of paper and lay it on a flat surface. We're going to make a crease that bisects the 90 degree angle made by the adjacent raw edges of the paper. Lift up the shorter edge and lay it directly on top of the longer edge. Pay careful attention to the corner so that the crease goes directly into it. The edge is aligned, make a firm crease along the length of the paper. Unfold and rotate the paper around and repeat on the other side. Folding creases accurately is one of the, the skills that you'll need in order to fold origami. So if you're having trouble with this, I recommend practicing a lot of simple models. We now have two reference points where the diagonal creases terminate at the raw edge of the paper. Fold the paper over and make a crease along the paper between these two folds. You can use the raw edge of the paper to help align this crease. Now trim away the excess by cutting or tearing away the extra paper. Turn the paper over. Now push the sides of the paper in and bring the top of the paper down, aligning all of the raw edges. Make sure all the edges are aligned and make a firm crease along the vertical center of the model. Now align this corner with this corner and fold firmly through the middle. Turn the model over and repeat on the other side. Open the model. We now have four creases on our paper. Two diagonal creases as well as one horizontal and one vertical crease. Creases that point up are called mountain folds because they look like the tops of mountains and creases that angle down are called valley folds because they resemble valleys. We can turn a mountain into a valley or a valley into a mountain by hinging along that crease. If the creases lie flat, it is said to be neutral. All the creases together are known as a crease pattern. A crease pattern is an arrangement of creases that let the paper be folded into a flat shape. The flat shape is called base and contains a number of flaps that hinge along a central axis. The creases that create the base can be found in two ways, through a folding sequence or through a method called pre-folding. We used a folding sequence to find this base, but we could have also used pre-folding. With sequence folding, the paper remains folded into a flattened shape after each crease is added. Instructions for this kind of model are often given with step-by-step -step picture diagrams. With pre-folding, the paper returns to a flat square after each crease is created often only a single diagram of the crease pattern or CP is given for a reference to the model. Both methods, sequence and pre-folding, can be used independently or together. The kind of box pleating I'm going to be teaching uses a lot of pre-folding. Using our existing creases, collapse the paper back into our base, which has four flaps. We can arrange the orientation of the flaps by folding them along the vertical axis. 
We're now going to thin down each one of our four flaps in half. Bring this corner to where the central crease terminates along the bottom edge. And unfold. Open the flap slightly and inside reverse fold the corner of the paper. Repeat this on the other flaps. set this paper aside so you can use it later as a reference. That's it for this lesson. We learned some terminology and how to create a basic feature using box pleating. In the next video I'll be showing you how to combine multiple features in one model. After that I'll show you how to create different features other than the basic flat. Please leave a constructive comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, thank you for watching and bye for now.